So back when I first started getting into analog photography and even earlier when I was just shooting disposable cameras, I was really unorganized with the way that I would handle my digital film scans. You know, usually I would just take them off the CD or the USB drive that I got them from and I would just put them on some random folder on my computer, leave them with the random file names they had. And then when I put them on my phone into the photos app, they would just go to some random date because the metadata for the images wasn't when I shot them, but when they were scanned. Scanned. So it's made going back and looking at some of my older shots a little annoying, uh, at least for somebody OCD like myself. Um, but since then, I've actually put a lot of time and effort into developing a system that I think is organized both on the computer, but also on your phone so that you can scroll to the date a photo was taken and it's actually there and you're able to enjoy your memories in peace without going, Fuck, where, where is that? So I know it's not a super sexy topic, but today I wanna to talk about the way I organize my film scans. All right, so diving straight into it, I have a roll of Ektachrome that I shot last summer and last winter. I know. So let's take a look at this. So here's the folder. This is straight from the lab. I haven't done anything to it. We're gonna go through exactly what I'm gonna do with every roll that comes back from the lab. So in here, we'll see that I have a roll of 36 exposures of Ektachrome. And it starts off in Yellowstone, goes to the Tetons and the Sierra. And then at some point it, we're in Australia now. But I went to Australia in December and I was in the Tetons in the summer. So, we're gonna have to separate this somehow, but we will get to that. So, I need to put this with all of my other film photos. So I have an analog film photography library, right? So in my Dropbox, now I use Dropbox because it allows you to have a local copy and it also automatically uploads that to the cloud. So anytime I put something in this folder, it's already automatically backed up and then we're gonna back it up again because your photos are important. So in 2021, under analog, let's take a look at what we have in here. So all of my rolls, each one of these folders is a roll. All of these are organized. There's a certain sequencing, right? So what is this sequencing that we have here? So we have a number. That number is the month that I started to shoot the film. Now keep in mind that all of these are ordered so that they're going to order alphabetically in order that I shot them in. So we're sorting first by month and then by camera and then the roll, uh, the sequencing of rolls that I shot it in. So the first roll I shot of the month is R1. The second roll I shot in that camera is R2. The third roll I shot in that camera is R3. Got it? Okay, and then we go into the name of the stock and then the time frame. So here it's January 21. You'll see this one's February to March 2021. Um, some of these are have multiple month spreads. So that's just so that when I look in here, I can see, oh, okay, this was actually not just December. This is other photos as well, right? So now we want to put this in there. To do that, we're basically just gonna follow the same format that we have going right here. So I shot this Ektachrome. I started to shoot the Ektachrome in June. So we're gonna start this off with 06. June. And then the camera name. So I shot this with the Canon EOS 3. Cool. Now, did I shoot any other rolls on this camera in June? Which is important to know because we need to know which, where this falls relative to the other rolls I shot. So if we go to 06 EOS 3, we have two other rolls here. Now, I believe that, so that was beforehand and that was also beforehand. So we have R1 and R2, so the third roll that I shot on the EOS 3 in the month of June of 2021 makes this R3. Cool. Now, after that comes the stock. We know that this is Ektachrome. Ektachrome. And then the time frame at which I shot this on. So this is from June through December of 21. So that's it might seem a little bit convoluted, but that's the way that I like to order it because it, you know, you can go through here and see by each month in order of how they were shot on the cameras. Like here's all the stuff that I shot in August. And now I, all I have to do is, or and I shot a lot more in September, obviously. So now we can just go, oh, okay, all right, cool. There it all is. 
Okay, so we've gotten the folder name down now, but we need to change the file names. So to do that, we're actually gonna use a piece of software called a Better Finder Rename. You can see it down here, a Better Finder Rename 10. I believe this is the deal a lot of the version is out now, but that's okay, they do the same thing. So this is a paid piece of software. I believe it's around $25, but I think it's entirely worth it. You should consider it. Try the free, free trial. If you don't like it, then don't get it. Again, this is just me being anal about the way that everything is named in this program. So we're gonna drag all of these over here into the program. Now I have a preset for all of my, see, analog ingest. So in here for dummies, you'll see we have the name and then all we're gonna do is paste the name of the folder in here. Keep everything nice and consistent. So 2021. Now we're just gonna take this and copy it in. So now it's 2021-06 EOS 3 R3 Ektachrome June through December of 21. So I'll put a link in the description for the preset that you can use so that you can you know, do the exact same thing that I'm doing. But pretty much all we're doing is we're just changing the names, keeping the order the same. And now each of these has a very unique name. So if this folder happened to, or if one of these files happened to be, you know, jumbled in with a bunch of other files, it would be distinguishable just by the file name. I'd be able to know exactly everything I need to know about the film, minus like, you know, the metadata and stuff. So all of this is looking good. I put a little space here at the end because you see if I don't put a space in, it says 2101, put a little space, 21, and now it's the first photo, right? So everything looks good. We hit return, we hit rename all. Cool, all the file names were changed. Excellent. All right, so now here we have all of our newly renamed images. And now, we can go ahead and put them into the analog photography archive. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag that in here. And you'll see that now all of these green rolls are rolls that I've processed and been through. This one is unprocessed. Now, I don't actually run my Lightroom catalog out of this archive. This is just, you know, for backup sake and for having it in the cloud and stuff like that. I actually keep all of my files themselves I actually keep all of my files themselves on my little SSD. So if you'll go in here, 2022, or sorry, 2021 in analog, in archive, now you can see that we have the exact same folders in here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to drag this over here. And now we have 06 EOS 3 R3 right there, cool. So now we can go over to Lightroom and we can drag these in. So I'm just going to drag these guys over here and it's asking what I want to do with them. So we're just gonna copy the folder name. I don't like to retype things. I just like to copy the folder names because it minimizes mistakes. So this is, usually how I do it. I have build previews one-to-one -one because I hate it having to load. <laughs> uh, and I add to collection right as we're importing. And I just, for the collection, I just paste the name in the folder. So the folder names are the same in Lightroom as they are on the hard drive. That looks good. And now we're just gonna hit import. Now here you can immediately see one of the issues that we face with analog photography. So if we, you'll see that these are now out of order, right? That why is this photo of Australia in front of these photos in the Tetons? That was shot significantly afterwards, right? Uh, and that's because we're sorting by the capture time. So like I mentioned before, the metadata for these photos, the date and time that's embedded and baked into them isn't actually the date that I took the photos. It's when the photos were scanned in batches, right? So if we just organize these in order of when they were captured, that's no good. But if we switch this to file name, which we had just changed, it is the proper order. Now everything looks normal again, right? Cool, amazing. So now here's when you would go through and you would do any editing to the images, which I'm not actually gonna do right now because uh, that would make this video way longer. On the sidebar here, you can see that we have pretty much the exact same system that's going on in the folders in the Finder, right? Or Windows Explorer, whatever you call it on Windows. 
Uh, pretty much the way that I go about it is when I edit a photo, I I flag it a different color, right? So for example, let's go back to our folder here. So if I had edited this photo of these hot springs, right? I was like, yeah, yeah, this is amazing. What I do then, if it's done, I hit eight and that labels it green, right? So if it's green, it's done. And then once I've gone through this whole catalog and everything is green, when they're all edited, they're nice and green, okay? So now, we're gonna export them because they're all done. So we go up here to export. Now, the way that I export them is very similar to the way that I import them. We're actually gonna want to copy the folder name, right? So we go to rename collection, we just copy it. We don't actually change anything. We go back up here to export. Now here I have a preset that's very similar to the one that uh, we use to name things. Basically it just says, you know, when camera, blah, blah, blah. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paste that in here now the only difference between the folder name and the file name that I like to keep consistent is um, for the photos I like to put the year in a front just because if the file is ever jumbled in with a bunch of other folders it's not going to be like oh, which June was this you know now I'll know which June it was so I'm just going to put 2021 and then at the end of this I'm just going to put P. And that P designates that this image has been processed, it's done, it's not the lab scan, right? So all of that looks good. Now we just hit export. And now we're actually gonna go back over to the Dropbox, because I always export to the Dropbox first for some reason. And then we're just gonna find our folder. It was number three, EOS 3, R3, Ektachrome. All right, now in here, if we were just to paste it in here with all of these other existing lab scans, then that would be a mess. So we're gonna make a new folder. We're gonna call it processed. Whoops, processed. And open, and it's gonna go ahead and spit those out for us. Now when it's done, we can come over into our analog photo library. And where are we? Oh, spinny guy right there. All right, so now we've got our originals and our processed images. Now, if we just select all of those and then make a new folder for them, that's lab scans. So now we have the originals and we have the processed ones right next to each other. So we're not leaving anybody behind. Okay, now before we move them over into the SSD where we're gonna back them up and where they're just gonna live in harmony for the rest of their days um, I want to change the dates of these photos because like I said, you know This right here says That this image was created today at 253 now if we look at the EXIF data It says that this image was shot It doesn't even say when this image was shot it has no information. So when you put that onto your Photos app on your phone, it's gonna do any number of unpredictable things, but that's not what we want. We want to put the images in your phone so that they're actually where they're supposed to be. You know, when you take a photo on your phone, it knows when it was shot and it just goes into that date. It's like, oh, you shot this photo on May 21st, 2022. And now when you go back to May 21st, 2022, that photo will be there. But if I were to go back to whatever day that I shot this photo, in my photos thing. I'm like, I wanna reminisce on Mammoth Hot Springs. It's not gonna be there, but it will be on some random other day when I'm like, ah, I really, I was having a great day with some friends that day. Why are these Mammoth Hot Springs photos here? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use another piece of software by the same people, a better finder, except this one's called a better finder attributes. Now, this one is also paid, this one's $20, so, you know, sue me, these are the best tools I could find to do the things that uh, I'm trying to do here. Uh, sorry. Now, in order to actually redate these photos appropriately, we have to know when they were shot. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm actually just gonna go into my photos June, because I know that's when I shot these. June. 
and look for the day that we were at the hot springs. And it was this day, right? Oh, well, you'll see. That's a photo I shot on this camera just before I shot this one. So it's already in here. Wow. So this was June 10th, 2021, right? So June 10th, 2021. So we're going to go over here into a better finder attributes. Now this is a, looks a little bit complicated. It is a little bit complicated, but just bear with me for a moment. So there's actually no preset that I can make for this. So I'm going to walk you through exactly what's going on in here. So let's pretend for a moment that we're going to grab all of these photos, not pretend, let's actually do it. So all the photos from June 10th. So all of these ones, so that's a different day. So from eight until one, right? We're going to put those in here and we're going to use an action called advanced date manipulation. Don't worry about any of this other stuff, just advanced date manipulation. We're going to use a specific date. We're going to put in that date. So 6, 10, 2021 in the time, right? So I know that I already did this for some photos. So this one says 10, 34. So we'll just call this, we'll just say these ones shot, shot at 11. So they fall in after those photos. So 11, 05 and six seconds in the morning. We're going to overwrite the file creation date. We're not going to do anything about the file modification date for images, blah, blah, blah. Ignore that. Don't touch it. Um, change increment by sort order. So that basically means that the order that these are already in is the order that they're going to be manipulated to stay in order. So this is what is really important here about changing the dates and times. So if we were to change all of these eight photos to the same date and time, when you put them into your phone, they would be out of order because your phone would just go, okay, well, so these are all just Okay, so maybe we'll just choose this one's first since they're all at the exact same time. Maybe this one's first, maybe this one's second, maybe this one's third, but we don't want that to happen because we know this one's first, this one's second, this one's third. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to change this to one second. And what that's going to do is it's going to make each one of these one second later than the other one. So you can see the original date and time here, blah, blah, the created, the modified. So this is the final or sorry, this here is the final, right? This is what's gonna happen to it. So it's gonna be changed to 11.06, 11.05 and six seconds. This one's gonna be 11.05 and seven seconds. This one's gonna be 11.05 and eight seconds and so on and so forth, right? So now if we hit perform changes, okay. It's gonna change all of the dates and times, okay. And now, see here it says, okay. So this is actually created now on June 10th at 11.05, which isn't exactly the time that I shot the photo, but it's on that date. So who really cares, right? So now if we were to airdrop these to my phone, I don't like to just drag them into the photos app. I like to airdrop them. Um, you do whatever way you think is best, but I'm gonna drag these photos over to airdrop to my phone. All right, so the photos just hit my phone. Now, if we go ahead and select them, I mean, this step is optional, but I like to keep all my phone photos in folders, you know, albums separated by year. So I'm gonna go ahead and add these to analog 2021. And if we go to that album and we, hold on, let's not take a moment and gloss over this. <laughs> uh, okay, so if we take a moment and scroll down to where I think June is, uh, they should be up. Oh, would you look at that? They're right there. It's like the phone knows when they were taken. I don't know if you don't think that's cool, whatever. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. Um, maybe that issue just bothered me way too much, but I, I do really like being able to, you know, go into my library and just, ah, uh, you know, reminiscing on what happened in June, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Oh, and even my film photos are in here. That's cool. I don't know. Anyways, before we wrap up today's video, I did want to take a moment and thank today's sponsor, Wirestock. Since we're on the topic of getting organized with your images, why not put some of them to work for you? 
There was once a time where if you wanted to make any money with stock photo or video, you were signing yourself up for a huge headache. Thanks to Wirestock, those problems are now a thing of the past. Licensing your work through Wirestock literally couldn't be easier. You upload directly to them, and they'll distribute your footage across all major marketplaces for you. Not only that, but all you have to do is hit upload, and they take care of all the keywording and metadata as well. So you're probably thinking, okay, well, how much does that cost? Well, they pay higher than standard royalty rates and only take 15% off the top for all of that. So they only make money if you make money. So if you're like me and want to take advantage of all those dormant photos and videos sitting on your hard drive, go to wirestock.io at the link in the description. Thank you, Wirestock, for making this video possible. All right, guys, that about does it. That covers, I think, everything. If there's something that I am left out or was unclear, please just hop down in the comments and I'll be happy to talk about it with you. Um, I know that this might have been a convoluted and unexciting video, but I think that it's pretty rad and kind of important. I mean, not in the grand scheme of things, it's obviously not important to have your, your photos sort on your phone and on your computer and to be organized in any way. It really doesn't matter. But I think that, you know, in the years to come, and especially when I get older, I'm going to be really grateful that I have these little devices that I'm able to scroll through my life in chronological order on and to have my film photos in there with them because you know the film photos are the ones that make me the most nostalgic and that really convey the most feeling at, at least to me so I you know I think it's been a gift in my life doing this practice and I think it might be for you as well but that's all I've got for you today thank you so much for watching I appreciate you and I will see you next time Bye.